All right, we're back with yet another tutorial, and today we're gonna to be looking at a super easy text explosion tutorial. It's gonna look a bit corporate, like Apple, Google type of style, but it's super easy, super smooth, and um, really get some good practice to how you can use text animators in After Effects, which is a very underrated tool if you don't already know it. So um, let's have a look at the effect and then hop straight into After Effects. Now that you've seen it, let's hop into After Effects and get cracking. So I'm going to start here with a 1920 by 1080 canvas at 24 frames per second as per usual. Now we're going to start off with creating a text layer and we're just going to say, don't be afraid to create because we are super poetic. And I'm just going to center this text nice and easy. And now we're going to start off with something super simple. We're going to open up our text and open up again just so we kind of get a good overview. And then I'm gonna click the animate, the little triangle next to the animate, and then I'm gonna add a position. Now this essentially just allows you to animate the position of the characters, the words, the whatever of the text. You can see you can change to percentage, which is just zero to 100%, or based on index, which is then a one, two, three, four, you know, each character is um, its own index. And then you can change if you want lines, words, characters, excluding spaces or characters. We're just gonna work with characters because you know, we like to get things easy around here. In this text, we're gonna focus on one single word. So I'm gonna start here with the range selector and I'm gonna basically narrow down to which word you want it to be. You can be whatever, you can make it the whole text. And essentially you can see this red line here is basically gonna indicate the start of where we want to. And I'm just gonna set it to the eye just to create a little bit of smooth motion into the create. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep the end at the end because I would like all that, that section there that's marked off here. To be animated now we are going to want to set the shape to smooth just for some nice smoother animation and then i'm going to mess with the easing just to get some better results and since i've already done this effect i know just about what easing works well but uh, feel free to play around with it and just kind of dial it into a look you like so i'm going to set this to 52 for the high and for the low i'm going to set it to 30. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna mess with the position sliders just to get some interesting results. And I'm just gonna move this around a little bit. Um, that looks pretty neat. And already we have a pretty cool effect, but um, that's not all we're gonna be doing. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click add an animator. I'm gonna click add, and then I'm gonna add a wiggly selector. Now this is where it starts to get really fun because essentially it just, instead of going very linear, it kind of just, wiggles the selection around we're going to turn the wiggles per second off just because we don't want you can see that with it set to two it's just kind of float around and we want as much control as possible because when we animate we are control freaks so i'm going to set that to zero and as you can see that just does it just nulls it so that's perfect that is more or less all we're going to do for this specific one and now the thing we're going to animate in the position selector is just the max and the minimum so as you can see the max is currently set to 100 and the minimum is set to minus 100 and we have that look as you see and if we set those two values to zero it goes back to just being regular so what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe these two at zero we're going to go forward a little bit and then we're going to set the top one to 100 and the bottom one to minus 100 and then we're going to go forward and just set those back to zero so now we have this pretty neat not bad at all so what we can do is we can close this up just to get some more ease of mind. And then I'm gonna click the text again and I'm gonna add another animator. And this time we're gonna do rotation. So once we've done that, I'm gonna open it up so we can see what we're working with. And just to be sure, I'm gonna search start just so I can match the starts of each selector to be the same, just so we get some better results. I'm just gonna clear that. And then I'm gonna open back up my properties. Go into animator two. And here we're gonna, we aren't gonna set the shape to smooth, but rather ramp up. So the first one smooth, second one ramp up, really nice result, just a little more smooth and exponential than just using um, square, which is, which is very rigid. And for the ease high, I'm gonna set this to 23, and for the ease low, I'm gonna set this to 56. Now, once again, we're gonna be using a wiggly selector because they are just beautiful. So we're gonna go and add that, and I'm gonna open it up. 
and then we're gonna animate two things once again we're gonna take off the wiggles per second because we want control and I'm gonna decrease the correlation on the rotation all the way to zero and if you want you can also do that in the first animator which we didn't do um, but essentially if you look at this right now 50% of the characters are correlated there's 50% chance of I don't really know either way put that to zero you get more crazy results put that to 100 they all follow the curve so bada mean bada boom do what you want let's just set it to zero for now because why not now we're going to go back down to our rotation and we're going to animate two things here we're going to animate the rotation and the spatial phase or the temporal phase doesn't matter they I think do the same thing so i'm going to line this up with these keyframes so for the rotation i'm going to add a keyframe at zero I'm gonna go forward halfway through and I'm gonna go just put 180 just to make it nice and easy. Um, nothing too crazy. If you go overboard, it might look a bit wonky, but it really depends on what you want. And then back to zero at the end. Um, so now we have this animation. Slight rotation as it goes out, just a little more oomph in the bump. To add some more motion to the ocean, which we all know it's all about, we can go ahead to the beginning of our timeline, set a keyframe for spatial phase, go forward a good bit and just kind of drag it up a little bit. Let's just do 120 and it pretty much just creates a little bit more movement in the characters which is always nice to have and now if we click u we'll bring up our keyframes and this is what we have as of right now so pretty smooth pretty easy if we wanted to go a little bit crazier we can always select our layer and then search for position and then we can just play with these sliders as we please to create some crazier results it's always a good idea to do that while you're at peaky animation just so you can kind of see what it looks like and play it back and that's pretty cool. Now we all know we don't like linear keyframes, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use sexy speed because sexy speed makes everything sexier. A little bit more impact, a little bit more oomph, and that's really the base of a pretty simple animation. Now we already have a pretty clean animation. You can always go ahead and play with the easing of it and the different shapes to get different results, but um, that's a pretty basic text explosion animation. But um, the question I always like to ask myself is how can we spice it up? And well, if you are asking that, I have the answer. What we're gonna go ahead and do is turn on motion blur. Then we're gonna add an adjustment layer and we are gonna add echo. I'm gonna start by setting the echo time to negative 0.001. It's just gonna make the trail tighter and look more like a smear rather than just copies that are kind of delayed. And then I'm gonna go bonkers and set the number of echoes to about 40. And then I'm gonna change the echo operator to composite and back. That's just my usual go-to for this just in general using echo um, but if you want longer trails you can add more echoes etc etc but this these settings are pretty good baseline for most and as we can see in the preview that's being a bit slow because echo is a pretty heavy effect especially when you're recording um, you can already start to see the trails that echo is creating and it just adds a really nice and clean look to the text and just adds a bit more character to it as well and that is basically how you create a text explosion effect super easy super simple can be used for a lot of titles like this and the good thing about it is that it's super customizable so we can go ahead and we can change the text to be whatever we want we can change the font we can change the spacing like let's say we want to go ahead we want to pick a different font let's say we wanted to integral I'm gonna do this you can change the size you want to change the spacing between the letters um, you can go ahead and you can type something completely different like um, I love macaroni and then you can go ahead and select your layer and then click start so we can go ahead and change the starts of of them maybe go a little a little bit higher a little bit lower it really just depends just basically selecting how much of the word you want to be um, randomized and then if we play it back it's fully customizable which is neat because then you can just if you do a typo you know you can go and fix it I make a lot of typos so it's very useful to me and then if you go ahead and set the range selector all the way to the beginning I know it's a two percent it's not really gonna matter much you know that's zero two percent doesn't matter but um, if you go ahead and play that back you can see it looks pretty crazy but it is fully customizable um, which is a nice thing about this effect and using text animators compared to if you wanted to take this and turn it into a shape layer and then animate each shape by itself which of course also has some nice possibilities like stretching the text etc but this is ultimately a super easy effect that you can replicate on multiple layers throughout projects and you can even copy the keyframes from one text to another so 
that is always a good thing as well and you know why why not play around with it anyways that was it for this tutorial just something super quick and easy that you could make at home something that looks pretty clean kind of reminds me of like a google apple ad type style and then just adding the echo for some extra spice who doesn't like a good smear it just looks good yeah i hope you enjoyed watching this i would appreciate if you subscribed liked this video or even commented something that you would like to see next time but um yeah thank you i appreciate you and uh, see you next time